What's up, you guys? My name is James. Uh, I'm on staff here at North Coast with The Jordan, as produced by my sweater. Um, I'm stoked to be here with you guys tonight. I get to intro myself, since Chris isn't here. He's taking the weekend off, um, which is much deserved. You guys should definitely say a big thank you to Chris Hilkin for everything he does for you guys. I'm stoked that he's actually not here and taking the weekend off, and I get to speak freely, and he may never know what I say. Um, but like I said, I'm on staff with The Jordan. Um, I do uh, design and I'm in charge of campus stuff. For those of you guys that are seniors and hopefully are going to graduate, um, you guys get to all graduate into the ministry that I get to work for. So we get to hang out next year. So decide from this moment if you want to come to The Jordan based on what I tell you. Um, <laughs> Anyways, I'm stoked to be here with you guys. Um, I just got in from uh, back east. I went to Pennsylvania, so I'm a little tired. I drank a lot of coffee to be excited with you guys. It was like high schoolers. I got to get crazy. Um, but I'm stoked to be here. Hopefully you guys are excited to learn some stuff. Um, Chris asked me if I'd be a part of your guys' 99 Problems uh, series. Um, the first thing I thought was... Chris, have you ever heard of a rapper named Jay-Z? Because um, that's all I thought of when I heard of that. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, don't look it up. If you do know what I'm talking about, then you know what I'm talking about. So um, tonight we are going to be talking about why we are here, um, which I think is a, is a crazy question. It's a huge question. It's a question that people have been asking themselves since the beginning of time. Um, that from, from theologians to teachers to, to philosophers, they've all been asking, why are we here? Is, does life have a purpose? Does it have a meaning? Is, is, there, is there a reason behind existence? Um, and I think that it's, uh, it's a question that's worth delving into, uh, and it's a question that's really difficult to answer. Um, I think that it's one of those ones that uh, came up on that list that Chris sent me that I was like, man, I, I could try to answer that, but I don't know if I'm going to do a great job. And Rob took the problem of evil last week, so I was like, well, I guess I don't have a choice. Um, and like Chris had like a crazy list going, so I was like, well, I'm just going to take that and see what happens. Um, I do want to want to address something before we get into it because it is such a, a big topic. It's such a difficult question to answer. Now, the Bible's going to spell it out pretty clearly, um, but it's going to be kind of an overarching answer. It's not going to say, it's not going to be like, why are you here right there sitting in that chair? What is the purpose of your life? It's going to be the overall overarching answer of why are we here as humanity? Why are we here as a church? Why do we exist? Um, and so that's, that's how we're going to answer it tonight. I just want to set that standard so you guys aren't leaving here like, I don't know exactly why I'm going to choose the college I'm going to go to and do the profession I'm going to go because he didn't answer it for me. I'm going to do my best. I'm going to give you what the Bible says um, and let you make the most of it. Um, but the first thing I wanted to acknowledge, um, if you guys have your Bibles, I hope you do, um, you can open them up to Isaiah, the book of Isaiah. It's going to be chapter uh, 55, Isaiah 55. Um, whether it be your paperback Bible, your digital Bible, um, open it up to Isaiah 55. Um, I think this is a great verse to start from. I wanted to lay out some foundations for, for what we're going to talk about tonight. Um, and I, I mean, in, in some sense, I wanted to let myself off the hook. Um, because there are some things that I'm not going to be able to answer for you. There are some things that the Bible doesn't answer for us, that there is a cause for mystery in life. Um, by mystery, I don't mean like whodunit, murder mystery like you guys just did. I mean like unknown facts. There are things that we aren't going to know in this world. Um, and what we're gonna, and I, I just want to acknowledge that right away to tell you that I don't know all the answers. I don't have everything that, um, that you could ever wonder or question. Um, but we're going to do our best to answer that big question, why are we here? Um, so if you guys have your Bibles, open them up. Uh, like I said, Isaiah 55. Um, we're going to start in verse 8. If you guys are there, would you say amen? Nice and loud. Amen. If you guys are not there, would you say hold on? All right, we'll wait for you. All right, thank you. Um, okay, so Isaiah 55, starting in verse 8. Uh, it says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Isaiah 55, 8 and 9. I thought this was the most appropriate way to start this question. Why are we here? Because God has designed our life and our existence in so many more ways than we can ever even imagine. That we could ever understand. I wanted us to, to get a scope of what we're looking at. We're trying to diagnose why God has put us here. Why we've been placed here. And he says, he says right here in Isaiah 55 that your ways are not my ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. That we can only scratch the surface of why God has placed us here. We want to get that. I want to get that into your head, you guys. Because some things are going to be unknowable. There are some things that God has laid out that we won't know until we're beyond this life. And that's okay. That's cause for faith. That gives us a reason to trust God. It calls us to great faith. But it's a place where we want to start tonight as we ask this question, why are we here? So if you guys would just pray with me. 
Uh, God, we thank you so much for today. Father, we thank you for this season of Thanksgiving. God, for this season of Christmas where we are reminded of what you've done for us. Father, we just ask that tonight, God, you would open up our eyes and remind us why you've placed us here. God, that you have a design and a goal for our life. Father, we just ask that you would, you would speak through your word tonight. You would open up our eyes and help us to see you more clearly. God, we love you and we ask you that you would change us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I've, uh, I've tried to outline this question, why are we here, into four things. They're all going to start with the letter P because I'm a big fan of alliteration. It means they all start with the same letter. For those of you guys that don't know, alliteration. It's a new word. Write it down. Um, hopefully you guys are taking notes of some sort um, because notes are great. As much as you think you have a great memory, you're going to forget everything I say 10 minutes after you walk out that door, with maybe the exception of like a couple things you're like, oh, that was really for me. Um, but I, want, I, I would encourage you guys to take notes, especially in a series like this, um, because these are all going to be lifelong questions. This isn't going to be something that you just ask yourself while you're in high school, while you're in 11th grade or while you're a 12th grader. This is going to be something that reoccurs in your life. Um, as, you, as you get into your 20s, as you get in, get in and through college, as you start looking for somebody to marry, as you have kids, as you, as you plan for retirement and all those sorts of things that are way off for you guys, these are going to be questions that continually come up in conversations, that continually come up in your life. So I hope that right now you guys are building a solid foundation of knowledge about who, about who God is and what, what he's done for you. Um, so I wanted to start, the first thing that we're going to look at tonight is placed, the word placed. So if you're taking notes, you can write that down. Um, and I thought about this uh, as I, I was, I was kind of working through this question, why are we here? Um, and I thought of placement. When I was a little kid, um, I really, really enjoyed playing with action figures. Not to be confused with dolls, they were action figures. They were, they were figurines designed for action, okay? Uh, my sisters, they had dolls, I had action figures, all right? So, I loved action figures. My parents would buy them for me, they were cheap, so it was an easy Christmas gift, birthday gift, any time they, you know, they wanted to give me something, action figures. I was into my G.I. Joes and X-Men, and they were always at war with each other, because people don't like people that are different than them. X-Men, mutants, come on, you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, so, G.I. Joe versus X-Men, and I grew up with two sisters. I have a little brother now, but he came a lot later, so I was basically an only boy. Um, my sisters weren't super stoked on playing action figures with me or wrestling with me. I didn't really understand that, but, you know, that's neither here nor there. It's another issue. Um, so, I would set up in my room this incredible action figure saga. Now, I would take my sister's uh, Barbie stuff. She, my sisters had, like, the dream house and the cars and, like, the pools and all this other crap that came with Barbie stuff. But it worked perfectly for setting the scene for an ultimate action figure battle. Now, I'd set the house up, and I'd get, and all the characters had roles, and they had, like, backstories, and I was like, okay, this guy, he's, he's going to go in here, and he doesn't know, but the bad guys are in this house, but his friends know, so they're on top of the house, and everybody's ready, and everybody's placed, and I was also a kid that got distracted really easily. So... Very often, I would set up this very elaborate scene in my bedroom, and my friends would come over, and they'd be like, hey, let's go ride our bikes. And I was like, man, I love riding bikes. Let's, let's go do that. And I would just leave this gigantic display of drama in my room. And my mom would come home, and she would look in my room and be like, this is a disaster. Like, how, you can't just leave all your stuff everywhere. That's not how this works in this house. And I would look at my mom and be like, what are you talking about? Like, look at this scene before you. This is crazy. Like, this guy's about to walk into an ambush, mom, and he doesn't know. And and his friends are on top of the house, but they're coming back. And then these guys, they're already dead. That's where they're missing body parts. Those are what I did with the broken toys. And, like, and so I was set. I was ready. The whole scene was there. And, and my mom came in, and she looked at it as chaos. All she saw was that my toys were everywhere, that I had stolen stuff from my sister's room and placed it in my room, and that was a little bit weird. But, again, not the issue we're talking about. Um, I had this stuff all set up. And what I, what I, when I thought about that, I was like, this is it. This is what we're talking about tonight. Some of us are going to look at life and it's going to be this giant uh, jumble of chaos. It's this huge mess. Everything is just thrown in there and nobody really knows what's going on. And then some of us are going to look at life and be like, everything in here has got a reason. Everybody on that house, everybody in the house has a story, has a backstory, has a purpose for being there. And that's what we're going to look at tonight as we, as we open up this idea of why we're here. That we're placed here. That life is not this big cosmic coincidence. You're not here by accident. You're not just thrown in there. God has placed you specifically where you are for a reason. If he has you on top of the house, you're there to help him out when he gets in trouble. If you're inside, you're a bad guy. I'm sorry. But 
you're here for a reason. You're placed for a purpose. And uh, he spells that out for us in uh, 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 7. Again, if you guys want to turn there with me, it's a great verse to, to see with your own eyes. If you guys don't have your Bibles, I don't know what you're doing here. But um, if you don't have your Bibles, you can write it down, look it up later. These are great verses to, to again, to lean on, to study, um, to wrestle with a little bit when you come to these, these big life questions. So, again, we're looking at this idea that we're not, we're not in this big cosmic accident. We're not this cosmic coincidence. We're here for a reason and for a purpose. 1 Corinthians uh, 7, starting at verse 17, says, Nevertheless, each person should live as a believer in whatever situation the Lord has assigned to them, just as God has called them. This is the rule that I laid down in all churches. So Paul, talking to the Corinthians here, says he, he wants to let them know they're not an accident. They are where they are for a reason. That's the same thing that we need to understand first. You are where you are for a reason. Your life has a reason. Your life has a purpose. Uh, you know, I think um, it's important for us to remember that, that we're not, you know, that so much of life is going gonna, is gonna to be drawn down to those two differences. Are we, are we just this cosmic ball of accidents, or are we here with a reason, with a purpose? Are we placed? And I think... Uh, you know, that, again, we're, we're coming from the Bible. So I, I meant to say this before, and it just came back to me. So I wanted to let you guys know that I'm, I'm working from a presupposition. That means I'm assuming something before I walked in this door that I believe in God. I believe in one God. You guys have been going through this series. Chris talked about it. Um, Rob talked about it last week. Um, I'm presupposing that God exists, and therefore that he, is, he has made us, and he has placed us here. Um, I think that, uh, you know, you look at the universe, you look at us, you look at earth, and it, and it screams out for a creator. None of us walk by a house and are like, oh my gosh, can you imagine the storm that made this happen? There must have just been like wood and paint and nails laid down and like plumbing stuff and all the other stuff that goes into a house and a tornado just came and swept it up and bam, house. Nobody would do that, right? Because you look at a house and it's like, oh, somebody made this. Somebody put this together. Somebody that knows what they're doing put this together because all the pieces work. There's a bathroom right there because, oh, it's right by the kitchen. So you eat and then, you know, other stuff happens. And that makes sense, right? Because it screams out that there's a designer. When you look at something that's been designed, it screams out, somebody made this. Somebody took time and has talent and put this together. The same is true about us. The same is true about our existence. If you look outside, you look at yourself. I mean, some of you guys are tremendous works of art. I will say that. And it's a little weird because you're high schoolers, but I'm not saying it specifically. So, but anyways, I mean, some of you guys are put together incredibly, incredibly detailed. You look outside and it's unbelievable. If you guys didn't see the sunset today, you missed it. But there'll be another amazing one tomorrow. Hopefully, you know, I don't know. Uh, but the, the, the earth, the universe, it screams out there's a designer it didn't happen by accident. You are not a cosmic coincidence. You have been placed here. And that's what Paul's talking to us in 1 Corinthians. Placed. That's the first thing we have to understand in knowing why we're here. That you're not here by accident. The second thing we need to understand is that we are purposed. Another one of those Ps. Purposed. God places us here with a reason. You know, going back to that illustration, that my, I, my action figure illustration as I, as I wrote it down in my notes, um, I put everybody there for a reason. They all had a job to do. They all had a purpose. I think the second thing we need, we need to understand is that, one, we're, we're here for a reason, and that God has that reason, that he has that purpose. Um, in uh, Isaiah 43.7, you guys don't have to turn there. You can just write it down. Uh, Isaiah 43.7 says that everyone who is called by my name whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. Isaiah, uh, is a prophet, he's you know, speaking on behalf of God and, and talking to the people about you know, what they're doing and, and, uh, and, how, and what God wants them to do, what he's calling them out of. And he says that we're called for his glory. The first purpose that we're here, the reason, one of the reasons that we exist on this earth, that God has created us, is for his glory. The glory is kind of a big church word. Um, it it kind of translates into weight, into like uh, the, the weight of all the things that you do. Um, so compared to some of you guys, I have a little bit more glory. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, but we're here to give God glory. How do we do that? We praise him. We worship him. We proclaim his greatness on the earth. And we accomplish his will. That's how we give God glory. We praise him. We worship him. We proclaim his greatness on the earth. And we accomplish his will. That is what it means to give God glory. We follow those things in order to give God glory. 
The second thing that God has purposed us to do uh, comes out of Ephesians 2.10. Uh, Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. We are designed to work, to do work, to do good works. We're designed to glorify God and to do work. That is your purpose here on the earth. Again, it's an overarching purpose. I'm not telling you, you are designed to be a garbage man, and you are designed to be an artist, and you are designed to be a teacher. You guys can, f- you guys can fulfill those roles within that overarching purpose. I think that that's um, you know, kind of the beauty of this thing. God doesn't draw it out like a, like a map. Um, it's, a, it's, it's a game plan, if you will. It's something that we understand. The goal of the game is to win. How we're going to get there might be a little bit different because this purpose is big. Um, I think there, there's something to know in that like difference because to do good works sounds like, okay, so, so I'm supposed to you know, kind of follow all of these steps, give God the glory, and then do good stuff. Um, part of what, sometimes what happens in this idea is that we get lost. We get lost in the idea that, that God desires to know us. We're not, he, he doesn't want us just checking off boxes. He doesn't want us just going through these motions. That I listed those, listed those things, um, not so that you could be like, okay, I praised him today, I worshiped him today, I uh, proclaimed his greatness today, and I'm trying to live accomplished as well. Got it. Boom, I'm glorifying God. Um, he designed you to be in a relationship with him. He designed you to know him personally. Um, and we talk about those good works, and it's, again, it's a broad stroke. It's a big brush. How you're going to know those good works, how you're going to know what he wants from you is in relationship. Um, I thought about like this idea of like your parents. Um, everybody's got parents. Some of you guys like them. Some of you guys don't. You know, that's your problem. But um, we have a relationship with our parents in some, to some respect. Um, we have a relationship with somebody that you know. Or you can think of a friend or a brother or sister. Um, it doesn't really matter for this illustration, somebody that you know personally. The more time that you spend with them, the more time that you get to know them, um, the more things that you do with them, the more you're going to know what they would want you to do. Does that make sense to you guys? Um, like I, if I spend a lot of time with my dad and I see the way he does things and I see the things that, that he likes to do and then I'm faced with a decision, I can think based on all this time that I spent with my dad, what my dad would want me to do. Knowing his character, knowing who he is, knowing what he would do because I've seen him go through similar motions, uh, I can guess, I can give a great educated guess at what I think, he's, what I think he would do. And the same is true of our relationship with God. God has a purpose for us for us to glorify him, and for us to do good work. Excuse me. And we get closer to him through study and through prayer. And the closer you get to know him, the more you can understand and decipher his will. The more you can know what he wants you to do with with your life. And I think like so often people in in life, they're like, oh, what does God want from me? What is God's will for my life? And uh, I, you know, I always encourage people to talk to him, get to know him, and maybe he'll tell you. You know, if you wanted wanted an answer from somebody, the best way to go get it is to ask them, right? Right? It makes sense in life. If I wanted to know something about you or from you, I'd go and I'd talk to you. I'd be like, hey, what do you think about this? Well, that's crazy. I would never have guessed that. But because I asked you, now I can know. The same is true of our relationship, in our relationship with God. If you want to know about what God wants for you, go and talk to him. Spend time with him. Get to know him. You've got, you've got his word. You've got prayer. You can communicate with him. You can learn about what this purpose is, what his desire, what his design for your life is. Um, and it's not just being good. It's not just following steps because anybody can be good. Um, but God calls us to be godly. He calls us to be different. He calls us to change and be change agents to, to fulfill his work here on the earth. So we're, perp- we're, we're placed. You're here for a reason. You're purposed. You are designed to do work. I'm sorry if you guys don't like work, but you are designed to do it. It's just a season. Get it done. Glorify God. Those are your two things that you are purposed on this earth to do. The next thing, the next big P that you want to write down is partnered. Partnered. God has placed you here and he's given you this incredible call in your life. But he hasn't done so. uh, He he didn't place you and leave you. He didn't drop you and say, good luck. This is what I've called you to do. We are partnered. We are not in this alone. Romans 8, 26 says, in the same way, the spirit helps us in our weakness. For those of you guys that are believers in Jesus Christ that have accepted him as your Lord and Savior, you've received the Holy Spirit, the counselor, the guider, the helper, someone who spurs us into betterness who helps us to determine what God wants for our life, who gives us calls to go into places that we would never dream of going. The Holy Spirit is our helper. We're not in this alone. Uh, Hebrews 13.6 says, The Lord is my helper. Psalm 121 says, My help comes from the Lord. God has not placed you here to leave you here. 
He's not giving you a purpose so that you would fail. He desires for you to succeed and he gives you the help that you need if we would just ask for it. Look, look, at, the, look at the Bible, uh, look to prayer, look to your community. People are going to help you and support you that God has placed around you to help you succeed because you're not in this alone. We're not in this alone. So often in life when we get lost, the first thing we want to do is just sink back, is just be by myself. I, need just, I just need some alone time. This is the wrong answer. This is the wrong answer for us when we feel like we're losing our purpose because God doesn't call us to do this by ourselves. He calls us to be partners. You are partnered with God. You are partnered with the Holy Spirit. You are partnered with your community to succeed. That's what God wants for you. He's cheering for you. He desires for you to succeed. The last thing that we need to understand, and maybe my favorite part about this, about why we're here, is promoted. Everybody likes promotions. You guys got jobs? You know about promotions yet? Yeah, that's right. Hopefully you guys all know about promotions someday. Um, they're a good thing. You know, they mean that you're, that you're doing a good job. You've done what you're supposed to do, and you get to move on up to the next whatever the thing looks like in your job. The last thing we need to remember is we are promoted. That this is not our final destination. This isn't it for us. Like I said, I uh, just got back from the East Coast from Pennsylvania. It was beautiful, snowed, it was awesome. Um, I don't get a lot of that, you know, in Vista, but uh, it was fun. It was also fun to leave. But um, so I love being in the airport because, like, you know, you just get to see, like, the craziest people. Like, their people are, like, traveling and they're wearing weird things and, or different things, I'm sorry. Um, but, like, they're, you know, they're coming from everywhere and they're, like, dressed funny because, like, they want to relax. But, like, some people still really want to look nice on planes. I don't know. Um, but I like, I like, I like airports because they're super interesting. You see interesting people. But it's just, like, I, I like being in the airport because I like to go home. I think I've, I've gotten the privilege to travel to some amazing places in the world. And it's incredible, and you guys should do it, and as much as you can, as often as you can. It's expensive, but make it happen. Um, but I love traveling because I love to go home. And I think that when I get on the plane, and, you know, they're like, they're talking about you, and like, oh, if your final destination is San Francisco, make sure you stay on the plane afterwards. If you're moving on to here, here. My final destination is always San Diego because it's home, and I love it. And I'm always so excited when I, when I get on that plane, and they're like, oh, you're going home. And I was thinking about this idea of promotion, that this isn't our home. This is our airport. We are, we are waiting here for our promotion. We're waiting here for our final destination because this isn't it. And so often in life, we get stuck right here. in this. We get stuck in this airport thinking like, oh, well, they've got a lot of stuff to eat in here. So this seems like a good place to just set down some roots. But we are in an airport. Uh, in in uh, 2 Corinthians, I've been all over Corinthians tonight and recently because it's a good book. You should read it. But 2 Corinthians 5 um, says, five, starting in verse one, I think. Yeah, that's what I wrote down. Uh, For we know that if earth, uh, sorry, let me pick this up, I'm getting old. Uh, For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. Meanwhile, we groan, longing to be clothed instead with our heavenly dwelling. For while we are in this tent, we groan and are burdened because we do not wish to be unclothed, but to be clothed instead with our heavenly dwelling so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. Now the one who has fashioned us for this very purpose is God, who has given us the spirit as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. I love the way that Paul writes about it. He says that this is a tent, that our time here on earth is a tent. And when you think about a tent, you probably think of camping, you know, because that's what you use tents for mostly, or like other stuff. I don't really know. But tents, camping, right? Um, And you think of like what's in a tent, like a sleeping bag, maybe an air mattress for some of you guys. You might not be old enough for that yet, but someday you will be, so good luck. Um, You get to put, uh, you know, maybe a bag in there, but that's it. You don't hang lights. You don't hang pictures. You don't like lay out carpet or anything like that, you know, because it's a tent. Like you're going to be there for, you know, X amount of days. This isn't a long-term plan. This isn't going to be your long-term home dwelling place. It's a tent. Everybody understands that about a tent. And I love that Paul says that about our life and our existence here on earth, that it's a tent, that it's temporary, that this isn't it, that we are here to do a job. We are here to glorify God for a time. But this is a tent. This isn't it. I, uh, (laughs) good call. Um, 
I love this quote from C.S. Lewis. He says, If I find in myself desires which nothing in this world can satisfy, the only logical explanation is that I was made for another world. I'm going to read that one more time for you. If I find in myself desires which nothing in this world can satisfy, the only logical explanation is that I was made for another world. You were made for something else. You were made for something more. You are here to do a job. You are here to accomplish a mission. And then you get promoted. You get to go on. If you do it well, you get to hear those words, well done, good and faithful servant. That's my prayer for you guys tonight. That you would know that that's your purpose. That your goal in life is to glorify God. To do the good works that he's prepared for you. To hear those words, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been placed here. It's not an accident. God has given you a purpose for your life. Get to know him and find out more about it. You're not in this alone. You're partnered. He gives you the Holy Spirit. He gives you his word. He gives you uh, the opportunity to communicate with him in study and in prayer. And remember, lastly, that this isn't it. This isn't it for us. This is an airport. This is a tent. We're moving on beyond this. What are you doing to get to the end? What are you doing to hear well done? Are you working at your purpose? Are you fulfilling that goal that God has set out for your life? I hope so. I hope that you guys hear me tonight. For those of you guys that, um, that struggle with this, I think that it's a real thing. It's a real question um, that if you haven't asked yourself yet, you will. One day you'll be standing outside under an incredible sky and be like, what am I doing on this earth? What am I doing in my life? What has God called me to do? And I hope that you think of this, that you think of the Bible, that you think of what God has said about you and who you are and what he's made you to do. Because he has an incredible purpose for your life. He has an incredible goal. And you can find it in it. You can find your purpose and your meaning and other things, but they will never be fulfilling. Because it's God that fulfills us. It's God that gives us purpose, and it's God where we're found. So let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much. God, we thank you for your word, for the truth that it speaks uh, about our lives, God about who we are and about who you've created us to be. God, I just ask um, that you would continue to stir in the hearts of these students tonight. Father, that you would remind them whose they are, God. That you have a purpose and a design for their life. That you have a goal that you would love to see fulfilled in it. God, I pray for boldness in their lives in boldness to break away from things that are holding them down, that are slowing them down, that are keeping them away from the good things that you have for them. Father, I pray for brokenness, that you would take away from us, God, anything that's halting our purpose, halting your work in our life. God, we love you so much, and we thank you for your grace and for your mercy, that right now in this moment we are forgiven. We are made clean, and we are given a new opportunity, God, because of your grace, because of what you've done on the cross. We thank you for purpose, that we don't have to walk through this life unsure. Lord, we love you, and we ask that you continue to work in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so I have a couple quick announcements for you since, again, Chris isn't here. I um, wanted to remind you guys, um, you've got Hume Lake signups in the back. Um, that's a blast if you guys have never been there, or if you went last year, you already know. I was in that video. If you missed it, you should watch it again. Um, but sign up in the back, you guys. It's an unreal experience. They have world-class speakers. It's a rad time to just get away and hang out with your community. Um, also, you guys have a community night coming up December 11th. Yep, that's right. I was, whew. I don't remember all this and all that. It's crazy. Um, so don't forget about it. It's elf something. What is it? Elf yourself. That sounds a little controversial. Go elf yourself. Come on. Um, I guess it's high school, so whatever. Um, that video is pretty crazy. Based on that thing alone, I'd want to come. So that's it. You guys have a good night. We'll see you next time.